Um, he's already released executive orders, like you were saying, Brandon, reinstating uh, Keystone as well as Dakota Access Pipeline. I mean, it kind of frustrates me with the no dapple stuff because the Obama administration could have acted. I mean, just thinking that had the Obama administration acted back in the spring, right, or summer when this first became an issue, there were several months that have moved this along in a completely different process. Right. Um, and now at this point, I mean, maybe it wouldn't have made no difference. Maybe Trump would still do the same thing all along. But just like it's just frustrating because had the administration had the candidate that they were pushing actually came out more forcefully um, against no dapple. Not saying that this necessarily would have made it all better completely, but at the same time, it would have been a long way because you have a lot of people not just in North Dakota, but throughout that entire region that are against the pipeline for various reasons. You have homeowners in Iowa who've had, you know, property seized who are trying to to force and beat beat it back. So Definitely. that was just something I thought about. Go ahead. Yeah, but it's, it's a two-pronged thing that like that Obama had a problem with two things. A, actually getting these policies done and, and you know, B, being a, a vocal advocate for them. So yeah, maybe the things that he did, such as, uh, you know, sorry, uh, the ACA, maybe they would have gotten repealed anyway. But there is a there's a woeful lack of information out there for people. Like, people are just uninformed about this to the point where people th- don't know difference between the – people think there's difference between the ACA and Obamacare. And so his measures don't ever go far enough. He always gives out these sort of lukewarm measures along with lukewarm endorsements of his own measures. So, like, it's, like he does both. So like they're not strong. He's not strong in word or in action when it comes to this sort of these sort of things. Right. And so it makes it very easy. It makes it very easy to get rid of them and very hard to defend them. And I said I said a few a few weeks ago. Imagine if Obama. We were trying to defend single payer right now. Like imagine mm-hmm. how easy it would be to be to yeah. defend single payer or to you know defend Medicare for all or a public option because people wouldn't be seeing these increases in premium right now. Mm-hmm. Or even hell, even if he had put a cap, right? Even if the, if the, if the ACA had called for a cap. Right. It would be much, it'd be much easier to defend. But what it was, it was a handout to corporations that, yes, it's a net boon for for the lives of many millions of people. But it's hard to defend as the, you know, on, on the ground. Especially since he didn't bother to defend it as much on the ground. Instead of defending, instead of coming out to advocate for his own policy as it was being torn down. Instead, one of his last things in office was to come out and lambast people who were trying to get p- single payer. Like he, like, he, like he retroactively called them, I'm sorry, like, yeah, he retroactively called the people who were in 2009 and 10 were saying, hey, single payer is better, single payer is better, like no half measure, single payer. They go, the Bernie Sanders left or what ruined the ACA. It's like, no, the ACA was ruined to begin with because it was a, a, it was a, a neoliberal corporate handout. That's what ruined the ACA, and you couldn't and you couldn't even come out as a strong proponent of your own bill because it was so weak to begin with. Mm-hmm. And so, like, so hey, if you had either had given a single payer, or if you had come out strongly for Obamacare, the thing that you're that named after you, it'd be so much easier to defend because it would be so people would know what it is. But people don't know what it is. And I can only I, part of that is his fault. 